Welcome back to today's video. In continuation of our previous video with Piper, this week we are talking about input, output, formula, union and join tools in Alteryx. Hope you like this mini tutorial again. If you do, please click that like button and support us for more videos like this. Thank you. Now we are again back to the same screen which we all love the Alteryx. So last time I showed you that uh, we will be using our input palette to get the input data uh, for, for uh, any kind of input we want, like connecting to database or connecting to SQL or connecting to any Excel file, CSV or any sorts of file which Alteryx supports. So uh, today I will show you another thing uh, which will make you more crazy like yeah okay we can do that as well so i will start with our use case so we have uh, the sales data with us so before starting i will show you how it looks so we have two data sources one is sales data one and another is sales data two so if we see the sales data one So in the sales data one, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns. Uh, and it looks almost same uh, as we discussed even in last use cases. Uh, but uh, if you see, there are certain records for which we do not have any values. They are quite blank. And uh, yeah, this will be the scenario which will be helping us out to realize like what what's the, the challenge that people face now if i go to sales data 2 so i almost have same number of uh, uh, records but uh, like you can see the units the cost and the uh, total cost is missing here so we will understand that using these two use cases or these two data sets, what's the problem that we get? So let's begin with our workflow. So as I was saying that this time we will not use a tool palette directly. So what I will do is I just track this file to Alteryx and drop it here. So if you see it directly like uh, selected the input tool and asked me for selecting the data sheet and it's here. So instead of dragging and dropping the tool, then selecting the file, I can directly drag a file here and it, the data will be uh, like available with the input data tool. Similarly, I will do for the second data set as well. And it's here now. So, if you see, we have on the left hand side bottom, you can see uh, this is the data set two and this is the data set one. Now, what I will use is the join tool, which we just talked about. So join tool works exactly like how we uh, do in the normal SQL statements. So we have a uh, one input, we have a second input, and like if we want more than one input, then we have a multiple join tool, but we are not going to focus on that. But today we will only focus on the simple join tool. So we had the left input, we have the right input. Now we have to define on what particular fields we want to do join. So we, if we want to join by position, so certain sets of data sets, or we want to join by field. So here we will, focus on specifically by field join. So I will start with order date, then region and representative and item. So these will be the uh, four field on the basis of which I will be doing the join here. And uh, I will now run my workflow. So if we see uh, like uh, the join here gives me the output, which we get usually from the inner join uh, when we do any or create any kind of SQL statements. So the one thing that you can notice here, which automatically alters to sm very smartly. 
So if you see, uh, we have a few common fields in both the data. So one is the order date, region, representative, sorry, yeah, the representative and the items. These four fields were common. So what Alteryx did is like, uh, instead of creating the duplicate field names, it uh, uh, for the right field, it may, by default named them as the right underscore order date, right underscore region, and similarly for the other fields. So this is what Alteryx do smartly. So if I see uh, the inner join data output, so I can see all the fields here. So these four fields, one, two, three, four are useless for us because they, they are kind of repetitive. So I will uh, uh, remove those fields and also I will remove unknown because I do not want that while performing uh, the join, I should get any kind of unnecessary fields. Uh, by themselves. So I will manually select if I need any sets of fields. Now the inner join, if I again now run after deselecting. So the inner join showcase me all the fields uh, which were present in the sales data one uh, and also in the sales data two. But yeah, in the sales data two, we had the, the cost fields missing. So for them, uh, like uh, we, we will see that how things will happen. So for now the inner joins work perfectly. So my input was 43 records from both the files, but somehow a few of the records doesn't match and we have in, with the inner join 36 records. So now I will go to the left join and see. Okay, so there are few different uh, conditions might be the region or the sales representative or the type of item which resulted in the uh, like uh, disjoint or the I would say uh, records which were not available on the right uh, uh, hand side data set. So uh, from the left hand side, we have these records left. But uh, now uh, my requirement is that I want to get the data uh, whether it is left join, whether it is from inner join or whether it is from the right join. So I want all the data, but there is a constraint that none of the fields should be null. Every field should have some data, whether if it's a string field, it should be like uh, uh, something like uh, not available or something you can write uh, default if it is null or empty or in case uh, if it is uh, uh, in teacher value, then you either should write zero or something, or if it is uh, like a float or something, so you can write there 0, 0.0 some, so like that. Uh, you have to make sure that this criteria is uh, uh, like uh, handled properly. Mm -hmm. So for the left-hand side, now you can see that these three fields uh, uh, have the like null values, uh, which I do not want. So for that, what I have to do is I will create, I will use the formula tool for left join. And uh, here I will select that column, which where I am getting the issue with the numbers. So unit cost. So by default, it was double. And we can see that the older data is uh, in, t in the integer form. So I will assign the value zero here. Now, similarly, I will add another column. So did I some, do something wrong? Yes, I did. So what, so the thing is, uh, I directly overwrite all the values to zero, but I have to make sure that if something is null, then only it should be zero. So for that, I should be writing a proper formula. So it will be like, is null, so I will mention the here the field name and the field name is unit. And if this is null, then I will assign it the value as zero. Else I will assign it the same value uh, which the field got. And we end the if statement in the formula tool with and if. 
So this is a simple if else statement uh, for writing a formula in the formula tool in Alteryx. If the if else statement is uh, uh, um, already available, or there are other tools like like case function, any other. Uh, yes, we, we, we have all those uh, kind of whatever the loops that are available. We have all those sets of statements available here uh, in Alteryx. Okay. So if else, uh, you can use a nested if else, you can use uh, case statements and even the while statements. So all those things works here. So we are basically using an if statement to say if the value is null, then show zero, else show the same column or value. Correct. Correct. Thank you. So I will copy this formula again because I just need to uh, add it the same for the others. So I will just change the column name here. So I copied that formula and I changed the field name here. So instead of unit cells, I unit I will use unit cost. And here also I will do the same. So you can see like when I'm try typing the name of the field with a square bracket, so it by default showcasing me whatever the available fields are. So I can just click on the arrow and select any one of them. So can we say that we are cleaning the data? Yes, we can say that. Okay, so we are cleaning the data. Okay. We, we can do this by the data cleansing tool as well. But right now, as I want to explain you, uh, how this uh, these situations comes in join tool. So how you can manually handle them. So right now I'm just en entering zero. So maybe there are possible use cases where you, instead of zero, you need to enter certain values. So in that case, uh, the data cleansing tool will not help you. Correct. So you, th in that case, you have to use the formula tool. So Correct. that's why we are processing with, proceeding with this particular format right now. And formula can be as complex as possible. Yes, right. or you can prepare a macro where you can create that, that entire sets of functionality, but that is out of scope for this particular. So, uh, that's a good question. Now. Anybody anybody who wants to learn what is a macro in Alteryx, please do comment below. Uh, we'll try to see if we can make a similar video like that. Give us at least 20 or 30 likes on macro or specific comments, we'll make something on macro. Thank you, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> And now the last field, the total, we will include that in here. So if you see now all the three fields have been handled and if I run this workflow now, so for the left join, uh, I should not see any sets of nulls now. So you see wherever we had the nulls, now we have zeros available. And for the others, uh, the values are coming as it is. But in case I did not add it the, that this condition if else, then it would have overwritten all the values to zero. Now the join tool um, has all the data correctly. And now the right join. Oh my God, in the right zone, we do not have those three total fields. So where we have the cost, we have the units. So how, we, what will I do? I will create new fields for those. So because I, uh, I do not want any nulls in my data when I'm unioning the, that data with together. So if the fields in any of the data set is not available while you doing the union. So by default for those records, those fields will become null. So that's why we it is necessary that we create those fields here and with the same name uh, so that uh, uh, it does the Alteryx doesn't identify those fields as a different field. The type and the name should be same. So now here, if we see that we have units as a double uh, type so you can see the data type below the union field ha unit feed has the data type and it is uh, named as units so we will create the same field here add column we will name it units and we will change its data type to double you can see there are a lot of uh, different data sets or data types available here you can select them 
but right now we require double uh, it was double in the other two cases now similarly we see for unit cost so it is again double and it named as unit cost so we will do the same we can create another column we will uh, click on add column and we will name it as unit cost and we will create zero and we will name it as we will data type as double similarly what we will do is we will create another column which is total if i remember correctly and it should also be double and i will send it as zero and just to be confirm or to be sure we will check yep it was total and zero so now what happened is when we union this data sets from the inner join left join and right join we will not receive any nulls so we will see both the cases where we are not directly joining from these and where we are joining from uh, from the use cases we created so i will take two union tools so the tool one so here i handle all everything and the use case two where i will directly take the input from the uh, data sets of the join tool not the formula tool so i will run this and let's match the output so now we have 50 records so the data set one where we handle the, uh, all the things from the left as well as the right join uh, everything looks good we have uh, data for every value and there are no nulls here but now in this case we will have multiple nulls and if i am trying to write into a data set which doesn't accept null values then it will be a problem for us Oops. so you null handling can be done with that formula tool nicely is what we are trying to show here yes uh, the, uh, the basic intent is when we are pairing the join tool and union tool together so we need to make sure that if we are taking the input from the left join or right join or both uh, uh, and trying to union them, we need to make sure that we handle the uh, values properly because uh, lots of time there are sets of fields uh, where we are trying to create running totals. So by running totals, I mean the cumulative values. So when we create a cumulative values, so they should be properly ordered and there should not be a null values there should be a zero values uh, or zero or something else so in if we do not handle those scenarios then the running total will not be ca calculated instead of a straight line you will see spikes uh, in your graph so that 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 is not what i am trying to do uh, if i have to do in a correct way i i should be handling my data properly uh, specifically in these scenario where we are using the or pairing the join tool with the union tool uh, one after another. If you see, we learned about four tools, input, join, uh, formula, union. Yeah, right. So kind of, it has a four. and of course, output can be, you can always output the output in the yes. using an output tool, but so kind of five tools, input, join, formula, union, output. Wow. We kind of touched five tools in our tricks in this session. Hopefully like um, uh, if, uh, uh you guys have any more questions or any further questions regarding this or any specific use case where you are still facing any problems you can reach out to raghav and surely we can uh, come up with a solution video for that absolutely so everybody whoever has any specific questions on any other tool but specifically we reach, we learned about five tools today input output join union and formula tools any specific use case you would like to uh, uh, solve or you're solving and you're not able to solve, put it in the comments box, uh, reach out to us. I'll try to reply or, um, and we'll try to reach out to Vibo and uh, get your questions answered.
uh, any last comments webber otherwise thanks a lot for this session uh, looking forward to more sessions like this thank you oh, thanks a lot as always uh, uh, you've been great and thanks for coming on our channel and uh, helping our subscribers and all our viewers thank you take care uh, till next time everybody see you bye bye